Hello friends, so today I will also again make a video on the graph series. So I will be posting out different problems from lead code and also from code forces. Now I am solving out some 7 to 8 problems from lead code and then we are going to move to code forces also. So this code is not actually correct for this problem. So don't paste this code out or use this code out. Uh, I just like you have to little bit modify this code out. So I will tell you how you can modify and that is some sort of homework for you. You you can use out this code only. This code is perfectly running well. It is giving the answer, but you have to somewhat like somewhat uh, modify this code out to actually pass this program. So we are going to understand what is this problem and then why this code is not working here and how you can modify it to make this problem work. So this is also like a good problem, medium problem from lead code. So first we can understand what a tree is. So the tree is actually, as you can see, it is an undirected graph that is connected and has no cycles. Like a tree can have also directed graph, like directed edges also. So the main thing here is that in a tree, there are no cycles. So I can uh, tell you with an example. So if I somehow draw out some graph now as you can see in this graph now you can tell that oh like why this is like this is a you can tell that this is a graph you cannot tell that this is a tree like some people might think that this is not not a tree but this is a tree okay but the, the main thing here is because there is no cycle if i connect like this this is not a tree now because in tree if there are n nodes then there should be n minus one edges these are edges and these are nodes. So if any graph has n nodes, total number of nodes are n and if has, it has n minus one edges, then it is obviously a tree. If anywhere you see out this sentence that any graph has n nodes and n minus one edges, then just think that it's a tree. And also it doesn't have any cycles or loops. Okay. Now in this problem, they are actually given you that you are given a graph which has one extra edge. Okay, so it means that it has n nodes and n edges. So it means that there must be one edge which is making a cycle. If there are n minus one edges, there will be no cycle at all. But if there are n or like more than n minus one edges, obviously there will be more cycles. Because if I just form some graph or like a tree, if you haven't seen like this, and if I connect like this, every node which I connect will form a cycle. Okay. So if there are n nodes and n minus one edges, it will never form a cycle. So in the problem, it's given that there are n edges. Okay. So then you have to just tell that whether like just which edge to remove such that it will become a tree, like which edge you should remove that it will become a tree so that the, the cycle, the loop in the tree will remove. Okay. So this is a good problem. So and this can be also asked in interviews also like how can you check that whether the graph is a tree or not how you can check that whether the graph is a tree so first you have to understand what a tree is the tree is that it should be consisting of n minus one edges if it has n nodes and also it should not be having any cycle so you just have to tell just have to check that the basic condition whether the graph has cycles or not if the graph doesn't have cycles and if there are n minus n edges then it is a tree now how you can check like check the graph has cycles or not and that's the main problem. So what you can check here is in a, in a tree, okay, in a tree or in a graph, any graph, if it doesn't have cycle, then what you can do to check it out is just make a visited vector. And if you do a DFS from any, if they are bi-directional edges, like there is no directional thing in this, if they are bi-directional edges, you start from any node. And if you do a DFS, if you do a DFS or BFS, anything like that, then you do not encounter the same node again. If you make it visited. So, because it means that if I, if I visit this node again, I will mark out in the visit visited table that like maybe this is the node I've just marked out. Then I have marked out this, marked out this, marked out this. So in a DFS manner, you go from top to bottom like this, and then you go to, you go to this. And so if I, there's an edge here, okay, then. As you can see, if I go here, then I will, then I will jump here, then I will jump here and then I will go to here, which is bad. So this will actually form a cycle. So as you can see, if there is no cycle, 
like there is no edge like this i will go to this then i will retract back i will go to this go to this go to this and go back come back to this and then that's fine it, it doesn't mean that this is a cycle don't think that's a cycle i'm just going back into recursion tree so it just means that there is no cycle when you make a visited vector if you do not encounter the same node again okay then it means that there is no cycle so how you can do that with the code part i will also explain you but we can also explain you with the example part so the problem is like there's also one more thing in dfs or like in trees what you can actually do here is in or in any graph you actually make adjacency list okay adjacency list is for every node you will store out what are the addition nodes that node have so if this node is in a one two three every node has a number and in the adjacency list you will store that for this node what are the addition nodes for this node so for one the addition nodes are two and three for two the addition nodes are one four and five as you can see now for adjacency list of three the addition nodes are one six and seven i hope you get the point so you will initially be given this now the main thought process of this problem is so let's assume that you start the dfs from one you will iterate over all the child nodes of this node so it is two and now because you are running a dfs you recursively call from this node to this node now now you are on two second node so what are the child nodes so you will try to cover all the child nodes from two the first child node is one and now you again go back to one so it is forming a loop i hope you get the point what i'm trying to say so you have to also keep track when you are doing dfs you can keep track of some sort of visited but as you can see if i keep track of visited and if now you can see i will go back to it and then i will tell that okay this is visited and i am i have returned back to it so it is forming a loop no it is false so i hope you are with me in visited if i am if i am telling you that if i encountered the same node again in the visited vector as you can see then it is a loop so it 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 will tell me that this is a loop and it will tell me false but this is not having a loop this graph is not having a loop so why this is happening because i am going back to the tree from which i have actually countered so in the dfs function which i will be using i will be also sending out my parents index so if i am going from 1 to 2 i will tell you i will also send in the dfs that what my parent is i will iterate over all the neighbors of 2 in the dfs call except the parent because if i go to the parent it will actually tell me that it is forming a loop i hope you get the point so you will see the code and that will make you more clear i will also show you the code so these are two things you have to send the current index and the parents index because in the in the child which you will go you will don't have to go to the uh, parent again because that will eventually form a loop but now as you can see if you just remove out this edge now so as you can see now if i go from the parent to the child and i will not go back because i have stored the so i will now iterate over all the child's uh, neighbors so this is one so because one it's parent i will not iterate over that now it is 4 and 5 so now 4 i will go to 4 So from four, I will go to four parent like neighbors. So the four neighbors is two. So obviously I have stored that that like that uh, like the parent of four is two. So I will not go there. And now there is no more neighbors of four. So now I will retract back, which like recursively going back. But if let's assume that this is connected to this. So from four I will go to five. Okay. Now from five because the five parent is four. I will not go there. But from five I will go to two. but now i will go to 2 and as you can see if i go to 2 from 5 i will only go to nodes which are not the parent obviously this is not the parent and this is not the parent and i have already visited it as you can see i will make a visited table because i have visited it from there only i will i have gone here and if i have gone here i have again come to that point again which is already visited as you can see now this is a cycle because it is only forming cycle when i will go to a node which is not my parent and it is already visited So I will show you more with the code part, but I hope you get the point in the tuition part. So this is the code part now. So I will first make the adjacency list. So for adjacency list, I will iterate over all the edges, make a graph. Okay. So this is some sort of like a vector of different arrays. Okay. So so like a vector of vectors, 
and I will push back for every edge there is a connection so if the edges are like this so there is an edge between 1 to 2 and a 2 to 1 so it's by direction so that's why I treated over all the edges and push back for 1 2 and for 2 and 1 so that's why I make the adjacency list if you haven't know how to form an adjacency list you can watch some other video and understand how to make an adjacency list then I will make a DFS call sending out the initial first node from which I will run the DFS my DFS run will always be from the first node and what is the parent for the first node because it is the first node there is no parent so I will send it with minus one and this is the answer we will return out okay this is the answer answer is just telling me which node or which edge we have to delete out to make it a tree then this is the DFS call the DFS call is sending me the the current node I am on from which the DFS is running and the parent of that node. okay if as you can see now I will just return out from this function if we have already find out as some edge this is storing out minus one that there is no edge we have already find out but if you have already find out some edge we just return out because we don't have to calculate anything else if you are some if we are on some particular node we will first make it visited because I have I am on this node so I will make it visited so I will make the visited value of this particular node equal to one that I am visited now then I will iterate over all the child of this particular node so I am iterating over all the child which are stored in this g g of i so g of i g, g is actually storing out all the child indexes for the particular i index I am on iterating over all of them and we will only iterate over all of them which is not the parent so if it is a parent so as you can see if j is not the parent then only we are doing these things okay as you can see then only we are going in this if loop or like if condition if it is not the parent then i have two conditions if it is not the parent and i am hitting a j or child which is visited as you can see i am hitting a child which is visited it is equal to one then this is the edge we have to delete which edge from i to j because this is the children and from which I am standing on is i, i to j is the edge we have to delete out and we just return out from that case because we have found out the edge. Else if this is not the one we are finding out we are looking for we will recursively call this function again dfs again from the particular node I am to the child node. So if you are on this node if you are on this node I am looking over the child of this, which is this okay then how we can I will recursively call this over this node DFS function. So I'm and now the current node is this, which is which is J, and the parent of this node is this, which which was I am on. I was on the ith node. Alright. I hope you get the point. So we will just recursively call this function again and again until we find out a value which is already visited out, and it will be following out a cycle. So we will just store that in the answer. Else we do not okay now the main so this code is running fine because this code is not having any problem so if the so as you can see i'm just iterating over whole graph only once and finding out the answer so it is o of n only but the problem in this problem like in this question is they are actually telling you that if there are multiple answers so as you can see in this graph if i can if this is the graph we are given i can delete out this edge also and it will form a tree i can delete out this edge it will also form a tree Okay, so there are multiple answers for this example. So this question will always give you a particular answer. But the thing here is they have told you that if there are multiple answer, you have to return out the last occurrence in the input. So if there are a lot of edges and everyone is the candidate for the answer, you have to return out the last candidate. And this is like two, three. And my code is not returning out the last answer. It is giving you an answer. I hope you get the point. So how you can solve out this problem is uh, so if you want to find out for the last value what you can do here is just keep on like you can you can take these nodes and make like add this edge add the add one edge to this graph and check that whether it is forming a cycle or not check the second node whether it is forming a cycle or not third, third node it is forming a cycle or not and you have to find out the last edge which is forming the site. Okay, removing out that will form your site. I hope you get the point. So you can uh, like add all the nodes and then delete out the delete out this node because there is only one extra node now. So just form the whole graph, 
delete out this edge and check that whether it is forming a tree De delete out the second edge whether it is forming a tree go from the bottom to back or like back to front and check out for every edge because that's why there are only thousand so you can do this in o of n because i've told you that for the run complexity of this pro program is o of n if it is also 10 to the power 6 and the problem is asking you to print out any edge then the code is running fine as you can see the code is running fine for the second example because the the 1 comma 4 is the answer for this but for this i i'm actually printing out 1 comma 3 but the answer is 2 comma 3 so what you can do here is the code is running fine it is o of n but you have to run this example for like run this code deleting out every edge from back to front if i delete out this edge whether it is forming a tree or not if it is forming a tree then that's the edge we have to delete out because my main objective is delete out one edge and it should form a tree so you just have to make a for loop and delete out every edge like delete out this edge from this whole uh, graph and just run the whole example just run this code out and just check that whether it is forming a tree or not if it is forming a tree then that's the edge else like put this edge back delete out the next edge and just again check that I hope you understand the logic and the code part for this problem. If you still have not, you can mention down. I'll see you next time. Until then, keep coding and bye.